Hello, I'm Pastor Carl Gallops, and thank you for joining me on another edition of Insight. Well, it seems like even the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History is weighing in on the gender uh, controversy. Is it male or female? Gender identification. The Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History has posted this short article, but it's extremely important. Listen to the words, male or female. How do investigators and scientists tell if a bone or skeleton belongs to a man or a woman? The clues lie in the bones themselves, they say. A skeleton's overall size and sturdiness gives some clues within the same population. Males tend to have larger, more robust bones and joint surfaces and more bone development at muscle attachment sites. However, the pelvis is the best sex-related skeletal indicator, they say, because of distinct features adapted for childbearing. The skull also has features that can indicate sex, although slightly less reliably. Now, here's a picture of the clues in the pelvis. Here is the male male pelvis, here's the female pelvis. You can see the huge difference in the two. The bone structure is completely different. Then they have a table listing the variations between the male and the female pelvis. And then this last fact statement, which reads, sex-related skeletal features are not obvious in children's bones. Subtle differences are detectable, but they become more defined following puberty and sexual maturation. See, here's the bottom line, folks. Sexual identification, gender identification, it begins in the womb, either male or female. The human genome declares it. The DNA declares it. The billions of cells that will begin to develop each contain the DNA of that specific human being, and the DNA in the billions of cells declare either male or female. Now the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History tells us that even the bones declare male or female. So a person can have sexual reassignment surgery, or they can take medication, or they can apply cosmetics, or they can wear different clothing and declare themselves to be a different sex if they so choose. But a hundred years from now, if somebody digs up their bones, regardless of how they dressed, regardless of the drugs they took, regardless of what they did to their sexual organs to change their appearance when their bones are dug up, a hundred years from now, Somebody is going to look at those bones and say, you know what? This was a man or this was a woman. And that's the bottom line. That's the scientific truth. That's the fact. We are either male or female. Anything we do after that does not come from our DNA, but it comes from our heart, our spirit, or our mind. But even the bones declare we are either male or female from the beginning. The Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History is one of the latest to weigh in on this matter, whether they knew it or not. Thank you for listening to this edition of Insight with Pastor Carl Gallops, your host.